everybody, I'm Danica Quinn of The Actors Reporter and welcome to the Trade Vine. Happy day after Thanksgiving. Hope everybody's eating all of their uh, turkey sandwiches. I think that's the best part. You know, it's even better sometimes in the Thanksgiving dinner, the leftovers because all the flavors had set in. We found some really interesting articles this week to share with you that you just might have missed. Our goal here at The Trade Vine is to help you stay informed and to keep up with the trade, such as The Hollywood Reporter, Daily Variety, and Backstage. Backstage National Edition, November 18th through the 24th, 2010. There's an article in here titled Union Update by Daniel Holloway. SAG reaches cable and animation deals. The Screen Actors Guild announced last week that it has reached a tentative agreement with producers on new contracts for broadcasting cable animation and basic live cable action television. Basic cable live action television, that should read <laughs> my dyslexia and maybe a, a few little mimosas that I've had. Negotiations between SAG and producers began November 8th, the day after an agreement was reached between the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers and negotiations for SAG and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists on new contracts for theatrical film and primetime network television. Major points of the three-year basic cable agreements mirror those found in the network primetime agreement, including annual wage increases of 2% and an increase in employer contributions to union pension and health funds from 15% of performers' gross earnings to 16.5%. Does that really make that big of a difference? I guess it does. The tentative deal must now go to the SAG National Board of Directors for approval. I'd like a 0.5 increase. <laughs> That'd be awesome. And let me clarify, the reason why I've had mimosas is not that I'm drinking on the job, but I'm working on Thanksgiving. Yes, producers called me in to work on Thanksgiving. <laughs> But it's not work because I love what I do. <laughs> also in the Backstage National Edition, <laughs> edition. <laughs> the article is called Virtual Auditions. This is interesting. Uh, new services allow CDs to invite actors to audition online, written by Paul Harbour, Haber. Excuse me. There's something new afoot in the casting world. A service called EcoCast is touting what it prescribes and describes as a virtual pre-read. It works like this. A casting director sends an invitation to agents or actors to submit for a role along with the script and uh, acting directions. The actor then tapes his or her audition and uploads it via a link provided by the casting director directly to the casting director's secure page. So for anyone that is used to submitting pictures and resumes electronically through Backstage.com, for example, this type of online auditioning may seem like the logical next step. I kind of don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I think it's great, especially if you don't live in Los Angeles or, you know, if you live in Los Angeles and there's a casting in New York, then you don't have to pay for the plane ticket. But also, I think that it kind of, shall I say, makes the casting director's job just a little too easy. <gasps> Daily Variety Tuesday, November 23rd, 2010. <laughs> we get a lot of remarks about that. <laughs> Stir up a little controversy. Bad publicity is, no, is better than... No publicity. <laughs> November 23rd, 2010. Thesp gets Big Bang box by Cynthia Littleton. One of the Big Bang Theory stars, Simon Helberg, has been negotiating a pay increase with CBS for several months. Well, Simon Helberg is in for a happy Thanksgiving. You mean he can buy a bigger turkey this year? Yes, that's right. The thespian has reached a deal with Warner Brothers TV that gives him a whopping raise of more than $100,000 per episode this season. Uh, forget the 0.5%. I'm, I'm asking for $100,000 per trade fine, guys, <laughs> which is the show's fourth season. And the agreement includes pay hikes for season five and six and an option for a seventh season. Mm, that's pretty sweet. Daily negotiated. His starting pay for the first season was about $60,000 per segment. Oh, poor fella. His pay should raise to $350,000 by season seven. Is that per episode? So that's a lot of money. We just thought that it would be interesting to focus on one actor's good fortune. And one of the producers actually pointed out that it's really interesting. You never really hear about how much an actor makes, so it's really lucrative. No wonder so many people are moving here by the thousands every day to try to make those big bucks. But you've got to have talent. Oh, and I heard the other day, too, to be an actor in L.A., it's all about the Darwinism theory, the strongest survive. Love it. It's so true. <laughs> the Hollywood Reporter, December 1st, 2010, has a beautiful picture of Ronnie Chasen. This is absolutely so tragic. 
on page two, uh, she was tragically murdered last week. The beautiful photo is by Eric Charbonneau. And Ms. Chasen was a Hollywood publicist who worked for seven Best Picture Oscar winners, including The Hurt Locker. In the years, excuse me, in the hours before she was murdered, Ms. Chasen fussed over her clients, getting them ready for the limelight. A more detailed article entitled Murder in Beverly Hills by Kim Masters is found on page 45 of The Hollywood Reporter alongside a picture of Miss Chasen celebrating an Oscar win with Jeff Bridges for Crazy Heart. The films that Miss Chasen developed helped win the Best Picture Award at the Oscars. Um, were, some of them include Driving Miss Daisy, Shakespeare in Love, Chicago, Lord of the Rings, The Return for the, of the King, No Country for Old Men, Slumdog Millionaire, and The Hurt Locker. Definitely momentous moments in a fabulous career. Miss Chasen will surely be missed. That is just absolutely tragic. It'll be interesting to see what exactly happened. Well, that is it for this week. I'm Danica Quinn. Thank you so very much for watching. And remember, you heard it through the trade vine. Next, can we end on a lighter note? Because I'm a little depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Hope you had a good one. <laughs>